What's up guys? Today's video, we're gonna be giving you a update on the new shop that I'm building. Kind of let y'all take a look around and we're going to be seeing how much this Milwaukee pack out can actually hold and does it live up to the hype that they claim because they're pretty popular and I had Michael, Michael order me one and I wanna see what the fuss is all about. So let's check it out and y'all check out my new shop. Let's do it. So I want to give a quick shop update, kind of what's going on, and um, also kind of explain what today's video is about. As many of you guys have seen, I'm building a new shop and pretty much got everything done. I'm waiting on my spray foam guy who's going to spray the five inch insulation from above the eight foot wall all the way across to the ceiling to the other side. So my heating and air guy is supposed to be here. Um, it's cold, it's cold in Mississippi. For you guys that haven't seen the weather or may not know what's going on, we was down to a negative five wind chill, which is ridiculous in Mississippi. Um, I know you guys that live above the Mason-Dixon line may not think that's very cold, but if you live down here, it's freezing. So anyway, um, I'm to the point now in the shop where I'm waiting on my HVAC guy to come finish up. That way we can get our heat and air going. Then my spray foam guy is gonna come. Um, there's been a lot of misconceptions kind of on the spray foam. Like, should you put a moisture barrier or should you not? Fortunately for me, we have a guy that's been doing spray foam since spray foam was kind of a thing. So we're probably gonna show some of that and kind of cover some of those. Cause when you start doing some research on spray foam, the results are kind of all over the place especially when you get into the barn dominium sites and that kind of stuff. So we're gonna have a video clearing all that up. But in the meantime, I gotta prep my floor and get it ready to be sealed. And then as you see there, I'm going to have my lift put here. I'll do a full shot video explaining <clears throat> kind of what we did and why we did what we did when we laid this out. but. Under my lift, which will go here, I have pits dug for the feet or the supports for my lift. And they're about a foot deep. I'm kind of going to go over everything when we do the final shop floor or the final shop video. And I'll kind of explain what some of the things are like that, that come from over here and these and these. All this stuff will be explained later. But today, I've got to get everything kind of picked up, cleaned up, so we can seal the floors and get that ready. Um, this video is shot late on a Thursday night. I know everything's still iced over. So Matt Go Michael's not going to be running the truck, and I can't say that I blame him to put a truck that expensive on ice because we don't have plows, we don't have snow trucks, None of that kind of stuff. We just have to deal with it in the South. So if you guys watched last week's video, you know I picked up the new Milwaukee pack out. I've got it here and we're going to see if I can put all my construction type tools in it. And that way it's in one convenient case for the next project. So we'll get a quick look of kind of what we're wanting to store. I have a Milwaukee corded saw that I brought because I wasn't sure the battery saw would be able to do everything. But fortunately for me, the battery saw has cut every single board, every single stud, every piece of siding, every six by six, every four by four, every two by six, everything in this building was done with that saw. So I've got all these tools here that I'm fixing to try to store in this Milwaukee pack out. And I've got a lot more over here, as you guys can see. So we're gonna try to see 
if we can get all of this put in this pack out and that way I can roll it out of here, get everything swept up and then we can start the concrete sealing process. So let's see what it'll do. By the way, if you guys bought any of these fender covers, they make fantastic saw horse, uh, saw horses because I don't own any saw horses because I don't do construction until now. But anyway, so let's see if all of this junk can go in here and see if the pack out's really what Milwaukee claims it is. Um, it's actually a really cool features on this thing. I'll kind of go over some of that real quick. And that way you guys can see um, the, uh, the pack out and how it's designed and how it works. So obviously, feature is it works kind of like a dolly you guys are probably aware of this you push the button down the handle goes down push the button you can raise it up you can roll this thing around move it from job site to job site or wherever you want it that's really cool um i want to kind of go over what this looks like on the inside because some people in the automotive industry like we are may not be familiar with the pack out so it does have a rubber seal, as you can see here on the lid. So it is waterproof. So the top layer of mine, there's tons and tons and tons of configurations, as you can see with this brochure here. But the way this one's laid out, it's got the large divider, one piece divider. And this one is a three piece that you can take the dividers out in the center but they stack on top of each other. And on this side, it's kind of like a little baby tackle box, I guess is the best way to describe it. But it's got all these little compartments and another one of those dividers that you can take the centers out. So like I say, this is brand new, never used it. Obviously, as you guys can see, so the way it works, you simply pick up on this ring and you can slide it forward and it comes off. Um, so these tabs here in the lock here to lock each one together and each case has its own handle so you can take it off. So the center section of mine, which it also has a bigger handle on the top area but it has like a lift out tray and it's all open um to get all this stuff in here i may or may not be able to use the trays i don't know like we'll figure it out as we go but we're going to take it off as well and that's done by pulling the lever sliding it forward it's good to go so the large part down here has a lot deeper tray and one of the sit down trays on top of it. So I'm gonna start trying to load all the larger tools that I have in here, obviously in the bottom, and then we'll work our way up. And just see how it goes. Obviously, this is one of the larger of the tools, so I'm not going to let this fall. Let's fall. I can't. I am just going to leave the batteries on here. I'm going to take all my bits out if I need them because um, I do have the 20 volt line and the 12 volt line. That way I can um, use them for either one when I get ready. If you guys don't own one of these oscillating saws 
when you're doing any kind of carpentry work. This thing is fabulous. Um, like trimming around your outlet covers. Obviously I did it with a jigsaw and then you get over here and you need just a little bit. These are fabulous for that. I don't know who invented that, but I'm glad they did. Obviously when we started this, we didn't have power out on the shop. So I had to do everything with extension cords and battery lights and stuff like that from the house till we got our meter base installed. And uh, we used a lot of battery lights um, like these. As you see, also a Maxion light over there, but it's pretty much what we built the entire shop with that kind of stuff and I'm not very good at packing stuff I kind of just throw it in there so I'm sure some of you could get a whole lot more in the same space as what I'm getting in here but hey if it works it works right all right so that's pretty much got all the bigger of the tools put in there that I can find. I'm sure it'll be a lot of back and forth stuff, but we'll see. I probably should have put this one in the bottom since probably hopefully never have to do this thing again, but I'm going to put it in here. A lot of these are my automotive tools that'll go back in my automotive box. So um, I'm just gonna, gonna go through them as I need them here. So for the most part, that's got everything that I'd hope to put in there. The rest of it's gonna be automotive tools. I'm not gonna use the little divider trays. Um, got a little miscellaneous junk that I need to put in there too, like the nails and some screws and stuff like that. But as you see, it definitely holds a lot of tools. Um, a lot and it does a good job. I'll kind of go through some of the stuff that's in here. I kind of put the stuff that I knew I'd need again, specifically for this job, because I still have um, a couple of 220 plugs, some internet covers um, and all the, the plugs, covers to put in. So I need, I need access to my electrical stuff, but um, I've got a whole quarter inch drive socket set. All the Knipex pliers, square, um, all the extra bits, pencils, that kind of stuff is in here. Markers, that kind of stuff. Didn't touch this. That's probably where I'll put all the screws and stuff later on when I have time to go through them. Um, this side's completely empty as well. I'll probably pull those dividers out and move all those pliers and stuff there if I don't use it for screws and fasteners and wire staples, uh, that kind of stuff. So that's kind of the top layer. The middle layer, you can see I put the big skill saw in there because hopefully I never have to use it because the battery does a great job. Hole saws, regular drill bits, gloves, duct tape, um, slapstick, hammer. I got the big hammer in the bottom. Um, like you drive your ground rod in. PVC cutter, that kind of junk in there. So that's kind of stuff you're not going to use a whole lot. And then the bottom, it's got all the battery tools that you've seen laid out. And obviously there's some 
extra space that's in there. Like back here, it goes all the way to the bottom. Cause I'm not that great at packing, but you guys see it holds a lot of tools. So it's gonna work perfect for what I need. It's gonna make it easy to access the tools when I do need them. And then I have to go to somebody else's place to help them work on stuff. I can. Um, it's pretty cool that they put that lift handle on the front of there so you can get it in and out of your truck easy. But as you guys can see, the pile is significantly reduced. Um, I still got to pack up my chargers and put them in there, but pretty much it did everything I needed it to do. So anyway, uh, it's late. I think it's probably around midnight or so um, on a Thursday night. So we're making progress, hoping to get all this stuff done. And once we get it all done, I'll give you guys a full shop tour and kind of show you some cool stuff that I did in here. It's kind of hidden, can't see, um, but very useful stuff. And that way, if you guys decide to build your own shop, you, know, you can use this as kind of some pointers and improve on even what I've done. But uh, anyway, that's the pack out. That's the shop update. So you guys stay tuned because when this is done, it's going to be awesome. You guys have a great week. Like always, thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed, click that button. It's totally free. You never know what you're going to say on this channel. You guys have a great week. See ya.